Should we just go right into Rick? Ricky Glassman. So this is a very comedian heavy episode uh, because Steven and I are doing the show. You know what I mean? But Rick Glassman is kind of a difficult, uh, what do you say? Jew. Jew to know. Don't worry, Rick. I'm Jewish too. And I'm, I'm going to take over and be the performer this time. Exactly. Rick Glassman's annoying because, well, what did I, I kind of have said this before, but Rick is constantly trying to get attention, but he's not aware of it. Yeah. Sometimes he does it in a clever way, but it's also in a sneaky Jewish boy bar mitzvah way. Yeah. So it, it is like, I actually forgot I had this analogy ready to go. Mm-hmm. We were talking about iPod touch games when we were kids. Yeah. A few episodes back. Did you ever play this game? Pocket God. Ooh, sounds familiar. Doesn't look familiar yet. Pocket God was one of my favorite games here. And this is, so you, you, you have a little island and you can summon these little uh, aboriginals and you can do whatever you want to them. You can fling them. It'll show you here. Like if you, uh, it'll be in the next chapter. If you shake your iPod, then you'll cause an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Come on, buddy. You could do that too. Make them all fall off. Anyway, the point is Rick Glassman, (laughs) every time he does a podcast, he's doing like his own version of like pocket God. (laughs) He has to be in control. He chooses when the bits come in and when, you know, how long they stay for. And if he's not clued in on it, he will stop the show full sale to let everyone know that he doesn't like what's going on. He's, he really is a huge diva. And people, I think, pass it off as like, oh, he's just being funny. Like, that's his brand. But I don't think so. Because when he's around, like, his peers, even as a guest in someone else's house, mm-hmm. studio, he does the same exact thing. Which makes me think he might actually be autistic. But it's like... I mean, he is. Yeah. But... <laughs> I know he's, like, diagnosed. I don't think that's an excuse. I think the problem isn't that he's autistic. The problem is that he refuses to leave like bit playland. He can choose whether or not to be in bit playland. All right. Well, this isn't a therapy session for Rick, so I don't. I mean, but that I don't know. No, I, I'm I don't trying know that to. He can I think he can? Uh, I think he's a broken human. <laughs> so he was on the Adam Friedland show, which was very shocking because. No, I know it's weird. I wouldn't even see the overlap. Like in an obvious way, you know, like yeah. Theo, somebody that wouldn't go on the show, like most of that community, like, yeah, I don't know. Most of the comedian sphere. And even if Rick is sort of on the outside of that, I feel like they don't overlap with Adam at all. Right. And so, so for some reason, Rick was on and so was uh, Ian Fidance's girlfriend. And so we've got some timestamps here. We're going to walk you through and kind of demonstrate because Rick has been kind of a tough person to like showcase why he sucks because yeah. he doesn't always suck too. He that which is a rare uh, case for a lot of these comedians. So let's see. So at one oh one, we've got Rick demonstrating like why he has to always have some bit prepared. So here we go, folks. He's out. He's with family. He's, uh, but we're sending talking him about his, Nick Mullen. Our thoughts. We love Nick. Um, and, and to replace Nick, we couldn't have just one person. That's how much of a titan he is. So we got two. We got a, a fan favorite, Jordan Jensen over here. Hello. And a fanny pack, Rick Glassman. Oh, fan of here he is. And, a, and that little smile. He's got it all. He, he has the <laughs> one, two, three, the wait, say your retarded joke, and then smile like an idiot. Yes, this isn't here. Rick. Hello. And a fanny pack, Rick Glassman. Oh, fan of fucking... here he is. And you took a screenshot of this and sent it to me. I literally thought like you made something like this in Photoshop. <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think any of this was real. So I was very shocked to find that it ended up being real. So this is just kind of setting the stage. So my next timestamps, the first few of these are... Okay, what I want to say, though, before you move on, in regards to kind of what you're saying about, like, his audience will jump in for him, be like, oh, he's just being funny, or... I mean, I don't know what he said, but... (laughs) That's just what he does. It is, like, he's aware enough to know that this is a bit where he's, like... He's almost better at doing, like, the late-night talk show thing than Adam is from, the like, the breaking the fourth wall and stuff. But he's, like, so rude that it's impossible to overlook yes yes like he's just a rude person so it's like his bits come first like you were saying he has to be in control and if like somebody goes down a path that he was not clued in on like Mm -hmm. you said yeah i'm repeating you but he goes ballistic so anyway go on so at 410 uh yeah if rick isn't in on the conversation he has to just yeah take that attention and we've said that three times now (laughs) and then rick is in the background doing some stupid ass like Oh, uh, I don't know what's going on right now, so well, I'm just going to be squeezing this you. water bottle. And then I went to throw him angry. I was you on the phone. You punched the machine? Mm-hmm. 
while you were driving? And I went, fuck you. And then I went. I mean, it's just shit like that. He does it the whole time. He can't hold a conversation with these people. And he, like, that's what I mean. It's like, can you just not be the center of attention for two seconds? Even if he's doing it on purpose. I mean, I don't know. We could like Photoshop like a dick here. <laughs> no, we should. And just put it on a t-shirt. Yeah. Do, do. <laughs> Suck. Dicks and Rick's mouth. Dick now. Dick ass man. Shit ass man. 652. Great year. Uh, I've, well, I've since gotten the that's nickname plan. Well, we're, I, think, I think that I haven't figured out the dynamic yet for us not to talk over each other. It's uh, tough with three and I don't know. So... I'll play that one more time. It's not tough with three because it's just like having a conversation with three normal people. But Rick, again, not, you know, not conditioned for this. He tried. Yeah. He like tried to chime in once and they were still talking. And then he has to be like, no, hang on. Well, guys, real quick time out. We got to call time out. I'm still trying to figure out how this show goes. How you've done like 400 episodes of your own podcast. It, and but it's like with the not to be super inside jokey, but it's like he brings this issue upon himself. He's has he. If he had just sat there, no one would notice. But the fact that he has to stop the podcast, make this comment, then it makes everyone watching go, wait a minute, why does this guy feel like he can just chime in and like call time out whenever he wants to? So it makes him less likable. And the one defense you could give for Rick, and it's just not going to be true, so don't even listen to this, but the one defense you could give is that he's watched this show and he's seen how like there was a back and forth between Chris Cuomo and Adam and maybe he yeah. thought it would be an interview like that like he does with the really bad podcast girl booby mm -hmm. Altoff or whatever yeah yeah slightly off boobies Altoff got Uniboober so yeah <laughs> R.I.P. the Unabomber yeah he thinks he can uh it's like when people watch like reality tv at home like man if I were on this show I would win that's what yeah he could possibly be doing that but. and so things are definitely not going if like does he even know jordan i guess he's been on the ian show the in fight and show before mm -hmm. hasn't he I, I don't know but it's like why bring those two in should have brought ian and jordan in yes exactly or just ian yeah i'm trying to get ian to fuck me just so if <laughs> ian if you hear this then let's become friends and you can promote my podcast and, and maybe Ian, ian's actually like a good example of somebody who's like performative during other people's podcasts but he's good about just like not being obnoxious like he's obnoxious but he's so likable and how he is obnoxious like you can't help but laugh at it where he where rick is just obnoxious and you're wondering like what are you doing this whole time well and ian will let other people talk and he'll let yeah. even if he like interrupts he lets people get through their stories rick doesn't want to hear your story yeah he doesn't want to even have a conversation with you for real he just wants to try to be as funny as possible but he's not he's not funny yeah <laughs> Yeah, Damn, fuck I you, Rick. <laughs> he's like waiting for the next time to uh, like, he's like, when would be a good time to edit the poop joke, the doo-doo, the <laughs> joke. Yeah, when can I insert my uh, my rugs advertisement yeah. or whatever, his carpet bullshit ads. His his lampshade business. So how did him and Adam, Adam end up switching chairs? Adam went away for a minute? Yes. So it was after that clip that we did play where he's like, I'm still figuring out the dynamic here. So he calls time out and Adam says, we can restart from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where they're at. Yeah. Should we restart? No. Yeah. Okay. Should I do this thing again? Conducting him, pointing at him. Adam, Adam, Adam cut. No, 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 no. <laughs> Adam cut. No, no, no. <laughs> all right, now watch this. I'm glad I remembered this. I mean, by the way, this is what Rick does, and this is what all autistic people do. I don't know. We need to stop just throwing around the A word, even though he's diagnosed. But where he's like, yep, we should restart. And then as soon as Adam starts to go with his stupid bit... It's like, obviously, they're not going to restart for real. Yeah. He's like, no, no, don't do it. Right, right. Yeah, that's... What what causes people to do that? I don't know. It's I like they know. just want to be heard, you know? They, they want to be heard, but they don't want people to do something about it. It's like people who reserve the right to complain about stupid shit. But the, next, we get a game of musical chairs. This is very important. So I've got some music that I've got queued up. We're going to play. How long is it going to take Rick to switch chairs once Adam gets up? Adam, cut. No, 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 no. Adam, cut. No, no, no. Adam, don't do it. Leave it what will Rick cut. do? No, keep, him, keep him going. <laughs> Adam, cut. <laughs> Immediately, he schemes on over to the next chair. Mm -hmm. He just goes right to it. Like, it's nothing. It's like he's breathing. He has to be the center of attention. Adam's gone. I will be the host now. Podcast event. And now You're he pretends to, to be the host. Adam. And does a stupid bit. What's it like being a podcaster? Oh, I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah, I mean, 
Was he trying to do an Adam impression? No, no. He was just trying to take over the show. He just went right into Rick Glassman's show. He took his shoes off. So, like you mentioned about, uh, like, The Tonight Show, how he does kind of do that late night thing where he wants to, like, go meta multiple mm. times. So, this yeah. is kind of an example oh. of that. So, anyway, uh, Jordan, you rode your motorcycle here today. Did. Yeah. Did you ride side saddle or Reverse did you ride uh, Dyke style? Dyke style. I don't Dyke know style. what's going on I'm here out. With, with your style and what balls are in the air. The first whatever many minutes, is that staying in? because. It's in. Because if it's not in, I have to redo the fanny pack bit. It is, okay. So again, not even worried about the content. Wait a minute, was that bit a real bit? Because I brought, I bought a fanny pack for the fanny pack bit. Knowing your shot doesn't only offer making sure you have confidence in where you are and what yeah. it's supposed to be. Well, now he's acting like a fucking filmmaker. Yes. A place where so he makes them do an acting exercise. Say, uh, say that. And then he starts directing the uh, cameraman. Say that you he's just lost a lot of money. Here, go on me for a sec. Say you just yeah. lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say that to me. And if we're tight, let me show you how I would react to that. Oh, not it's not let's say you lost a lot of money. You're like, Adam, I'd like you I to say. I love Adam right. derailing so, okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll, say, we'll say why. Adam, tell me that you're sad because you lost a lot of money in, in a little further away shot. Mm. I'm sad because I lost a lot of money. Oh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't think that's good acting. You're wrong. Stop for one second. I'll Go closer. I'll oh. show you good acting. But let me, do, let me Wait, make my point before thing? you show okay. me good you acting. Thing? Now show, let me show you tight. Now say it again. Aggravated. Rick, I'm I'm pretty sad because I just lost a lot of money. I'm sorry. Okay, that's not good acting, and I'll show you good acting. Okay, this okay. when Adam, I want to try next. Yeah, no, this is worth reverse. The long, no, this is a long me. clip, but I, I know how it works. Okay, <laughs> go on, Rick. Oops. His camera. Let me sh let me show you good acting. Okay, by the show way, me I a ask good it. show me a good acting of that. Can I try next? Yes, you can try next. But okay. now I'm trying to show him good acting. Okay. So to him. Yeah, I know. I'm just not in a no, good sorry, mood. No, directing Don't Adam. question his act. He's been in two TV shows. <laughs> sorry, I'm just in a bad mood. Why? I just lost so much money. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, okay, as an actor. Uh, I mean, like, look at his. He's so fucking pissed right now. I know, now. because Adam's owning his ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you think this is funny? This is like a joke to you right now that... Oh, I get it. You're in control of the bit, and I'm not. And that's funny to you. It's not funny to me. Alaska. So I think the thing with Rick is, um, and the people that are fans of him and just buy into a shtick are never going to believe us on this, and nobody's really going to care. But it's like he's found out because he's so, you know, he's got a Jew brain and all those things, <laughs> and he's got a high-functioning autism, that he's, like, found the ultimate way to cope, where mm -hmm. it's like any time he gets mad, he can guise it through this performance, yeah, and yeah. he can go and he can pretend like he's mad and derail, and he can jump back in and, in and out of bits. But, you know, this is what people don't understand when you're listening to a podcast, when you listen to us, any mm -hmm. podcast. These things bleed through, these emotions, this angry Rick face. Yeah. Uh, they come through, and they're not, they're not just like, oh, these are all famous people. They don't make these same mistakes that we do. Right. No, it is like a vulnerable moment. Like, yeah, you can see it in the eyes. You see it on the look on his face. Exactly, yeah. Okay, 1627, another example of things that he has to constantly interrupt with. Name any two numbers. Okay. Go. 20 and 3. I've heard of them. <laughs> it's a little joke. I've done it before. So there you go. Adam's over here trying to just, I don't know, talk to Jordan, and then Rick has to con pick two numbers. I got a joke. Here we go. Ready? Pick two numbers. Oh, I've heard of them before. He just has to always break. He thinks there's ice everywhere that he has to break, but yeah. there's never ice anywhere. <laughs> so I think this is probably the best display of the difference between like Adam and uh, Rick in terms of like what type of Jewish people they are. Mm -hmm. By the way, Adolf Hitler only knew about California Jews, just so you know. Yeah. So he would have loved the Adam Friedland show. So uh, Jordan says something really stupid, and the way they both react to this stupid information is very telling of the type of people they are. Let's, let's hear what this whole I just think to L.A. Is, is, is constantly mm -hmm. telling a lie to a fault, and New York is constantly telling a truth to a fault. There's interesting things. Okay, so right there, from the get-go, she says something that everyone has heard before. Yeah. Notice how Adam, when Adam sees someone saying something dumb, he wants to give them more rope to hang themselves with because he understands like this is a funny opportunity. Maybe he does think that Jordan is stupid, but Rick, because of his autism and because of his, I mean, look at this stance right here. I mean, he <laughs> looks like, he looks like SpongeBob or something. I don't know why he looks like a little kid. Yeah. 
waiting to get off for his mom to pick him up from like baseball practice. Adam already knows that Rick is going to react this way. So he's got the diplomatic hands up. But Rick's response to hearing something stupid is to immediately correct it. Oh, well, really? I've heard that before. That's what hey, he says. Hey, there are differences between New York and What an interesting take. You know what I've noticed? I would rather be in New York when someone tells it to me straight, but at least I know it's authentic, than be in L.A. and someone's real nice to me, but behind my back they say I got a little fucking cock but he flesh has to, for you. Yeah, so then he just bits it out and they're not even, they're like, what Adam the f- hates him, by the way. <laughs> There's one frame, I hope I like time marked it, that literally could be a painting, but to me that's the difference between the two of them. Rick must correct Adam, like I said, give him enough rope for the dumb person saying something dumb to hang themselves with. He'll hold out, Ricky won't. Did it hurt when you got your, your ear pierced? Did it hurt when it was two punches? My fist to your... Two... Two hits, yeah. my fist and to... you, and my fist on your face and then your face on the ground. The face on the ground. Yeah, Sorry, I job. fucked that up. That's a good yes and. Well, I just wanted to know if it hurt when he got his ear pierced. So yeah, fist to the face, fist to the ground. I remember what I was going to say. Rick, it's like instead of reading the Torah when he was a kid, Mm -hmm. this is what he was reading instead. It's like these books. You remember seeing these in like the dollar bin (sighs) section? Book of useless facts. Always ready. Actually, Adam, the saying is this. No, Adam, it's actually this. It's actually that. And Adam knows how to gaslight him at this point. He's been doing it like the whole episode, which is really funny. Yeah, another exam- or like another way to prove that Rick is an asshole is if he had started this bit where somebody asked him if something you did hurt or whatever, and he went on some sideways fucking retarded thing, he would be all in on it. But instead, he yeah. keeps ignoring Adam. He can't play off of somebody else's bit. Yeah, he's like stumped because he just repeats the same thing. Like he asks the ear pierce question like again right yeah. after because he's like, oh, uh, Cannot compute, cannot keep up. Okay, and then 2217. The old pig skin? Yeah. Your dad, dad looks yeah. a lot like you. I know it's the other way around. Can I see a picture of your dad? She has to immediately be like, by the way, I know it's the other way around. So yeah, don't, fucking don't correct me. Jump into correction mode. This one's a big jump. We go to the 41 minute mark, and it just says Adam raps. I'm a crib. She always cooking it up. We play video games and shit. <laughs> I froze up again. Yeah, I'm starting on the hook. It's like Dancing Queen by ABBA. You know they start on the chorus. We gotta dance it. Do they start with that? Yeah, it's the only it's it's the only, it's the only song. ABBA song that starts with the chorus. It's the only song I think that starts with the chorus ever of all time ever. Really? Yeah, they start what with about, You Can Dance. Hey now, you're an all-star. That's not ABBA. You're right. That's Smash he doesn't Mouth. know anything. Smash Mouth, <laughs> and he doesn't start with that. He yeah. starts with one fist hits smash your mouth. Wants- and one smashes the ground. Have you ever, um, has you ever? That's it right there. Okay, this could be a painting. So he says that retarded joke about the face hitting the dick on the ground joke, right? Mm -hmm. And he thinks he did a clever callback from 20 minutes ago. But if you look at this canvas here, we've got Rick. He's like, (laughs) they must not be smart enough to understand that I've done a callback. And Adam is like, I can't even look at you right now. Yeah, not I mean, even... this is... <laughs> and then she is looking down. Like, I, not, they cannot even look at him right now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Zoom out. Zoom out really quick. Okay, okay. It's literally... It's, you see <laughs> you see in, you know, Rick's eyes, he's Judas. Yeah. A- Adam is Christ, you know, looking into Mary Magdalene, who's in, about to weep because she knows what Judas is about to do to him for not going along with the bit of Judaism. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is beautiful. I need to like make this a. This is gonna be the thumbnail or something. I don't know. I, I'll get it framed as a painting. It's like this. I should have just started with this. This is what the whole episode is. The body language says it all. Rick's yeah. legs are spread and they're not facing him. No, <laughs> he's ready to take it. And then one, two last things. Adam's gonna quickly. He's gonna dunk on Rick. And then go. That's a rock star bite, like uh, Fieri. I think what he's asking is, nice. is your mom ever... Like, he connected two of them like, together. Like, like diners oh, driving yes, okay. the dives. She's like, that's a rock star oh. bite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she does that? Cut to the video of I'm my mom doing that format. that everybody knows about. What Ooh. format, dude? Hanging out? Having fun? No, because we don't have headphones, and there's, like, little quick things. And I do too many of them. I know that. Like there's, oh, I used, you're that style autistic? <laughs> you try, I, I swear. Where you have to have <laughs> headphones on? Or you're walking on the street? No. <laughs> Just that you, we can't hear each other well enough, and, like... They're, Are you autistic? Because you don't have the autistic he butt. Is. He said he was. I don't, that's, that, uh, it's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to have to have autistic conversations on podcasts. Well, all you've, the been, time. you've been doing that. 
Oh, is that you don't want to be the ident uh, like identity <laughs> thing? I, I but just, this is what Adam does. If you tell him that you're something, he obsesses about it. Like I my friend. But now we get to the most contentious topic, which is farting, of course, right? Yes. Other than that, would be like, no, I don't want to smell a fart. On my podcast, we fart into the microphone. Rick set that precedent, actually. No, actually, the Stavros did it on Come Town for seven years. Oh. Well, oh. on our, oh. on our oh. podcast. Sorry. It wasn't my thing. I must have disgusting. taken it from him. I didn't like it when he did it, actually. Have you ever heard a fart into a microphone that's being amplified? Have you ever farted? Could you just answer my question? You did the same thing with the earrings. Yes. Let's answer yes. my question. Yes. yes, yes. And you don't think that's funny? No, it's Hearing not, it in a it, microphone? It doesn't hit enough. Here's what's funny, right? Oh, I'm okay. excited to learn. Okay. Uh, Have you ever farted into your cell phone while Shazam is on and found a new U2 song that you've never heard before? I like that joke. Yeah. <laughs> See, even he couldn't. You know, he was like, go ahead, Adam. I'm excited to learn. But even he was like, damn it, that was funny. Yeah. Yeah, so Adam even out shitty jokes him. So th those are all the timestamps I have. I don't know. Yeah, I, the comments have been great to read because, yeah, here we go. Never thought I'd see cool Adam and regular Adam in the same room at the same time. I should have upvoted a lot of these. Hilarious how when Glassman doesn't have the reins on a podcast, he just becomes a bully. Yeah. So see, everybody else is clued in too. I mean, yes. I think these are more Adam's fans hating on him, and I guess we would put ourselves in that camp, not, you mm -hmm. know, but I wonder how Rick's audience views this appearance. Yeah, yeah. Is there a Rick Glassman subreddit we could maybe go find out or something? But yeah, I guess moral of the story, it's good that this episode happened so people can kind of see who Rick Glassman is. If he's not in control, he's going to make himself in control. If he doesn't get what's going on on the podcast, he's going to call time out and uh, just really make everything all about himself. He can't help it. Can't help it. 